welcome to It Simply Isn't Done, the weekly sermon recap podcast. Recap podcast. I'm Reverend Jess Davenport. And I'm Reverend Barry Petrucci. And together we are... The Irreverent Irreverent Reverends Reverends from Portage Chapel Hill Church in not-so-downtown Portage, Michigan. Here we are. Here we are for the last time. (laughs) For the last time. Wishes. The end of our Pentecost series. And uh, Barry's last Sunday here at Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. It was that. So the scripture, oh, what was it from? First Peter three, <laughs> thirteen through seventeen. There we go. There Thank you. Go. you. Just, I just need just a had to just had to give you a little shove. Thanks, thanks. What else is new? <laughs> so yeah, this will be uh, the last uh, of our podcasts, at least as co-pastors in this place. But mm-hmm. who knows what will? Who knows? Who knows? Who can say? <laughs> to quote someone I knew once. Wow. Well, we have to. Yeah. Uh, we get to record. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't, I don't yeah. Know so say. if you have already listened to the <laughs> scripture from First Peter three, and if you've already listened to the message, which was decidedly different than most messages at Chapel Hill, but. That happens sometimes. But if you've done that and you just want to go straight to this uh, scintillating conversation, you can check out the notes and uh, go to the number that's set there. The scripture today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good But happy are you, even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if this could possibly be God's will, than for doing evil. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks Thanks be to God. Amen. The funny thing is that Jess and I are hysterical together. And we said, I don't know, a year ago, what would happen if we planned out like a day that we said you're leaving and just see how many people show up? (laughs) Worked. Um, Yeah, thank you for being here. Uh, Daughter Bree. Son-in-law Nick flew in from Boston to be here. Lisa is here. Lisa is here, and we have um, been on this ministry journey. Uh, being, being a spouse, being the spouse of a clergy person is not always exciting, uh, not always easy. And uh, I give thanks for her on this, our 45th anniversary. So I'm not extremely good at picking dates for major events. (laughs) So Jess and I planned the first part of the Pentecost season uh, began with Pentecost Sunday and just did wild flames and wild winds and that's how the spirit is, kind of wild. And I did weird. (laughs) Uh, Talking about the beginnings of time at Chapel Hill and some of the things we've had to go through together. Uh, And I did wonderful. And now we are at wishes, and it is, 
it is the end. Um, preaching one last sermon is not an easy thing, and preparing it took uh, many gyrations. So we'll just see how we do. Um, next week, you're going to be starting, we did the W's, uh, now you're going to be starting with G words, I think, right? Good grief. Good grief. <laughs> Charlie Brown. Uh, so you'll have to stay tuned for that. I'll be, you know, I'll probably be eavesdropping from afar. My mom, as I have established on many occasions from the pulpit, which isn't here today, uh, and in casual conversation, my mom was a, a piece of work. You know, you know what that is? Um, I would share my deepest kid wishes and then my growing adult desires with her, and she would sing one of those introductions to well-known songs from musicals of, well, ages ago, right? And back then, the songs that we knew very well also had these weird lead-ins that we didn't know quite as well. And so it was years before I came to discover what this was about. My mom would lead uh, with whenever I wanted something. She'd say, wishing is good time wasted, but it's a habit, they say. Maybe there's nothing in wishing, but speaking of wishing, I'd say, do you know the song? Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina, and, right? But my mom just did that part about wishing being good time wasted, and I came to believe it was. Okay. So I have established myself as a strange old white guy, breaking out in not always in tune a cappella versions of songs. Even those of my own generation uh, likely do not remember. Why would my last message to you be any different? <laughs> Live with it. <laughs> and now you have your own wishes, like wishing I was not quite as pitchy as I often am, or that I would have the grace to just stop. Wishing is not really rooted in our theology. It is not part of our Judeo-Christian heritage. Wishing is sort of a low-risk form of hoping. It's the, hey, why not? That comes after a, a magic lamp is found and the genie lets us know that we have three wishes. Why not? We're not expecting a genie, but as long as you're here, well, okay, I'll make a few wishes. For those of us who dare to struggle in matters of faith, wishing is more like, it's more like hope and blessing, kind of a mashup, a blend of trusting in something beyond ourselves worth hoping in, hoping for, and sending the other, the other person, the other interest into the arms of God where we trust that hope will find fruition where it will find completion, where we trust it will all get worked out beyond, beyond the tears and the missing and the hard stuff. But Jess and I planned the Pentecost series with W's, and what are you gonna do? Wild, weird, wonderful, and yep, I wrap up the series and my time at Chapel Hill with wishes. A couple of English translations of the Greek have Jesus saying in his farewell in John 15, ask for whatever you wish. Eh, so, okay, I could go there. There, my wishes, my wants, my desires for you. The more I worked it, though, the more I was compelled by 1 Peter chapter 3, a little, a little letter at the back end of the New Testament. There, the often fleeting wish is the enduring hope. It was, um, it was just a little tattoo across the, the back of their neck. Had they grown their ha hair out just a little bit longer, it would never have been noticed. But there it was right in front of me. And I noticed in a free-form sort of script that read, Defend Hope. Defund hope. Thankfully, this was pre-COVID-19, and I was clearly not socially distant, so these bespectacled and aging eyes could still read Defend Hope. Believe it or not, I really do not try to be creepy. <laughs> but this, this was a 
captivating doublet, defend hope. We were standing online or in line, depending on what part of the country you're from. I was standing online on the same day, at the same time, at the very same Water Street coffee joint in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and their two inked words on the back of the neck intrigued me. Excuse me, says I, would you tell me about your neck ink? <laughs> okay, so any way I tell it, any way I say it, it still sounds creepy, right? <laughs> but I was apparently not the first to ask because they had their response ready. It's sort of from the Bible. Be ready to defend the hope that is within you, they say to me. Got it. Sort of a, a free paraphrase of 1 Peter 3 something. Okay, thanks, says I. Yeah, but that's not all if you want to know, they say to me. Oh, yeah, I want to know. <laughs> so they were next up to order, and then I, and then the wait for the drinks. So they say to me, picking up where they left off, and I was relieved that it had not been forgotten. So I got this three years ago. My brother was hooked on opioids and got a bad dose on the street. He OD'd, but texts came and gave him the out, and he lived, sort of. Ongoing heart arrhythmia, brain damage. And they say I was in the hospital chapel thinking, crying, praying, whatever. And this person with one of those collars, a chaplain, comes in and asks how I am. I struggled and said, staying hopeful. There was this pause, this space, and then the chaplain person says, I've looked at the charts, and I talked to the doctors, and I don't see a lot of reason for hope. And they said to me, but I did. But I did. He was my brother, and that was reason enough for my hope. I had had lots of conversations, some fights with God, and that was reason enough for my hope. So the chaplain person left, and I googled reasons for hope, and this Bible verse came up, and that's why it's on my neck. Hope is worth defending, they say, or it's not really hope. Hope is worth defending, or it's not really hope. This well-inked person in line at Water Street likely did not know it, but we were, we were dealing with a mashup of 1 Peter 3 and Romans 8. You can look them up. So uh, let's go with that. Not the first time we church professionals have had to deal on the fly with some version of Scripture tossed our way without context or accuracy, so let's just go with that. First Peter says, who will harm you if you are zealous for good, but happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Then Paul, in his letter to Romans, says, now if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. Not my strong suit. Okay. My wish for you. A wish that I trust is not good time wasted, as my mother predicted is that you remember this mashup of 1 Peter and Romans. You get to move ahead on an early wish that we would have two pastors and that there would be a healthy transition for this pastor to move on. This was more than a wish. It was more than a wish because it was a hope that you defended to each other in visioning and to our district superintendent and to the bishop. Your vi vision, your wish was wrapped in hope and you were patient in the long wait through COVID and so much more. My wish is that you welcome and honor my friend, my colleague, Pastor April Gutierrez, and celebrate 
the pastoral partnership of two highly skilled, highly gifted, and, and well-called siblings in faith. My wish is that you developed well-honed love that's made manifest in your patience with each other. My wish is that you would continue your relationship with my colleague, strange COVID pal, my dear friend and co-pastor Jess. Should I say more? <laughs> Church folk tend to take a long time to know just how good and how committed their pastors are. And to be fair, it can take a while for pastors to know just how good and just how committed those they shepherd are. My hope is that good relationships grow even better so that the work of God in and through this place goes uninhibited. My wish is that you tell your stories and listen to stories as though on a coffee line in Water Street, trusting that in each other's stories, deeper relationships will be built. It will be true between you and your pastors, and it will be true between you and all who sit in these oak chairs every week. And it will be true between you and those who dare to risk being new in this household of faith. For the new folks, I wish you would go slow with yourself, that you would be gentle, that you would allow space for silence and come to know God anew in this community. My wish for you is that you take the language the rhetoric of being a progressive congregation of the United Methodist Church in Michigan, and put that language to work in this church, in the community, and in the world. Talk is, as they say, cheap. And those of us who have a lot of words often rest there when there is stuff to be done. I hope that you would challenge each other and all who come here to engage the struggles all around us with tangible reasons for hope, to defend your hope by demonstrating the love of God that runs off of our tongues so easily, sometimes too easily. Defending hope may, in fact, may not be primarily what we do with our mouths. Defending hope may be demonstrating such hope with acts of kindness, of grace, of charity, works of justice, right relationship. I wish, in short, that we all walk the talk that we talk so well. Finally, finally, my wish for you is that you remember all of the challenges, all of the infighting through the years, all of the places of hurt and harm this community of faith went through in learning to listen and learning to love more patiently and more deeply. I hope you remember. I hope you remember because to forget, said Rabbi Baal Shem Tov years and years ago, to forget is exile, while remembrance, remembrance is the secret of redemp redemption. This week, I was reminded of the secular version of that saying as I watched the return of 100-year-olds and older soldiers to the beaches of Normandy. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Those who forget, forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So remember, Chapel Hill, that you are salt and light the critical elements of an emerging kingdom. It has been salt and light in community and world. So many of you have been salt and light for me in the days when things were pretty tasteless and pretty dark. I trust I've been that for you on occasion as well. Remember that you have all kinds of reasons here to defend hope. You have hoped your way through tough stuff time and again. Remember it. I wish you all divine blessings to continue to be such as God unfolds this new and amazing chapter. Your story as a congregation is only 62 years old. Jeez, I'm older than that. <laughs> I wish you hope-filled longevity and ever-deepening relationships one with another 
and with the God who binds us in this place. All God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back for some reflection. So, Barry, Hmm. this was, uh, and you mentioned it, I think, in the sermon, but in terms of uh, crafting, uh, how hard was this to write? This uh, took three distinct writings. It took three different directions. Oh. And, um, yeah, I... It's hard to write a last message to a, uh, a community you've been mm-hmm. a part of uh, in some leadership form or another for 23 years. Um, so, you know, we had set this as, as the end of the Pentecost series. Uh, wild, weird, wonderful wishes. And, you know, I had obviously had lots of wishes for this place and for you and for the the people um and i found myself having a hard time kind of forming them theologically Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway where i ended up is where i ended up and to the degree in which i formed them theologically that's all that's up to (laughs) y'all yeah well yeah that's interesting um and i can say that because what clearly what a lot of folks took was the defend hope, right? Because we got it on a lot of the connect cards when folks asked for prayer. Um, and it was really funny, too, because I was talking to Tori about it after. And he was like, you know, I thought Barry had already told the story because it was, you know, several months ago where he was talking about it another time. He went up to someone and asked them what their tattoo means. And then he was like, this was a separate and distinct time. So Barry just talks to people about their tattoos, um, which I thought was really interesting. I didn't remember that. Oh, yeah? Well, that one. Uh, he remembers. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. But I told this story at, at clergy session during COVID. Yeah. You did. You I did. figured there probably would not be an over, lot of overlap of people. <laughs> <laughs> Just me? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, well, folks really took really took that from it, certainly. And I think... I don't know about theological, but certainly um, ecclesiological, meaning the life of the church. There was, it was it, it had a very Pauline esque, like, hey, you know, act right. I'm leaving. So <laughs> here's some things stay, I want you to know. Stay the course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that? I mean, what did you? If you had to distill, <sighs> I know. I don't know. I know. I, you know. ecclesiology, missiology, you know, in there for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you want us to take from it, if there was a... I wanted you to take that that you all really need to be the church, and we do an awful lot of, of talking, and um, it's it's harder to get to get together on actually doing things that make a significant difference we do an awful lot of internal mm-hmm. stuff and um, and sometimes that can feel clubbish I did not say that because I don't think it's particularly helpful mm-hmm. uh, but I'll say it here <laughs> <laughs> yeah finding the line between how to build relationships with one another and then that becoming exclusive is hard yeah, yeah. and so understanding our call is really central in that yeah, making making space always and continually mm-hmm. for folks coming, mm-hmm. and we need to do better with that. And I didn't I didn't go down that rabbit hole too. Much. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of tough. You know, it's like it's like uh, leaving, but I don't want to take the opportunity to do scolding. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, sure. That's okay. Nobody saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Um, yeah, that makes sense. It, it's not particularly nice to be scolded no. on, on your way out. I mean, really, it was, 
I mean, a, a big part of the purpose was a celebration of your ministry. And we've had to do that in several ways and several iterations up until now. And um, it was good. Yeah, it was. everything was lovely. The Jubilee. The Jubilee was lovely. Sorry. My partner, Jess, just gave me a finger toward the microphone. <laughs> it was a pointer finger this so time. I'm moving, so. <laughs> moving myself closer to the microphone. Um, yeah, I mean, there were a ton of people, which was lovely for a summer day. And, um, mm-hmm. and colleagues from the community yeah. it meant a lot. Um, yeah, I don't. I did not particularly give myself permission to go down rabbit rabbit holes this week, other than rewriting the thing because I was not happy with the. I wasn't happy with the the formation and flow until I. I, I kind of had pieces that I needed to move around and get them to comfortable places. And, and there was a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. It was yeah. also our anniversary, and you know. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it was a big day. My kid was home. I'm back, back in in her church space, which was incredibly important for her and for me. So yeah. Yeah. Solid Lots. day. <laughs> Solid day. And the laying out of hands was powerful in a way I really didn't anticipate it being. So thank you for that. Mm-hmm. You are welcome. Now we have to take a have to take a bench back have to take a kneeling bench back we do we do have to return that because we don't have our own uh we should probably get it was, one it was lost in the flood <laughs> it was it was out in the supply building oh okay i was flooded. like uh, oh like no water no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was made out of gopher wood <laughs> Um, yeah, I can say I am particularly grateful in your message after you know i've heard several pastors last messages um and I won't go into those. <laughs> but I was really grateful that you affirmed the leadership that April and I have as we have more folks. Um, you know, like yesterday I heard more concerns about there being a lack of a male voice and things like that. And so I'm grateful um, for you to uplift and like, you know, let people know it's it's okay to like us. It's okay. It's not disloyal to you uh, if they like us. <laughs> no. And uh, I think that's important um, and next week I get to preach about uh, grieving, which we don't particularly do well as a society. Um, but I'm curious, what uh, what what does your grieving look like for this space? What has it looked like? Because we've known about this for a long flipping time. We have, and yeah. really too long. I mean, it's, it's, I know. it's just been a <laughs> lot. And um, I, my grieving. Um or maybe what is your, if you have an intentional practice, or how do you tend to it? Yeah, um, n- not, yeah. well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> not well. Oh. Not well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, seriously, I think that there will be, there will be, there will be intentional space for the grieving. Um, and I, I need to not bring it to new space. Yeah. Like, so, so it may, I may do some spiritual guidance work around around the grieving I've been giving some thought to that mm-hmm. um, so like a spiritual director yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah I'm not I'm not sure I mean I'm grieving I kind of grieve the whole leaving of the place I grieve leaving the particularities of, of the last four years um, with you I mean, I don't grieve the four years. <laughs> I grieve the leaving. Uh, I've been grieving <laughs> for four years. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And the particular configuration we have right now of staff and and leadership, it's it's uh, it, the church is in a good place, and mm-hmm. it's wonderful to leave things in a good place. It's also harder to leave things in a good place. You know, when yeah. when things are awful, it's kind of easy. <laughs> it's kind of easy to go bye. Yeah, there's a lot more relief when you're like, I'm getting out of that mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I don't feel like. I don't feel like anything is in a, in a particular mess right now here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but 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 I will need to do some work. And right now, there's just so many pieces that are moving, and uh, uh, mm-hmm. family vacation coming next week, and you know, getting the the final 
debris moved out of my office and so it's ready for <laughs> April. I mean, everybody, you know, the four people that listen to the podcast can identify with this. <laughs> that, you know, when you when you make a transition, there's just a lot of busyness that goes with the mm-hmm. you know, goes with the the feelings. And there have been a lot of uh, just a lot of feels yeah. through through all this. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, um, I'm grateful that you'd talk a little bit about what it looks like uh, to attend a grief or seemingly that you don't know yet and you need, you know you need to do that work and there probably hasn't even been time or space to do a lot of it. Um, but next week, yeah, I'll be able to talk a little bit about what I might be doing and it's interesting because, um, I should say it's interesting for clergy to talk about um, and I, there's a, people have different levels of comfortability in talking about feelings or emotions. So thinking about being honest, uh, sometimes is hard uh, homiletically, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about what that might look like. And, um, knowing that there are people who won't, don't particularly like that. Uh, that's, you know, too much, but, um, I'm grateful for what you spelled out and your wishes that were, I think, really honest without scolding and that named some of the realities. And I'm grateful folks, uh, I'm grateful folks showed up for you, the people that could. I know I said that to you yesterday. Yeah, I was, I was blown away. I mean, you put some extra chairs in, I think, and they were still, and we had to encourage people once again to move (laughs) off the aisles. Come on, (laughs) folks. But it was, th- there was a lot. I, I mean, it's, um, you never know who's going to come to things. Yeah. You know, so to have uh, adults who were kids coming back to say, this was really important. Yeah. That you were really important. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, th- I don't think, um, so, uh, I'll talk about this next week, but there was a part of the right of release that did not get, for whatever reason, it didn't get put up on the screen and it was a mutual forgiveness. Um, and without that even being said, uh, you could tell there is kind of a spirit of some of that within the space. And I think too, we have a hard gig and people put, a lot of their issues with God on our shoulders. And we often hear uh, how pissed people are (laughs) (laughs) with, you know, like in terms of feedback, pastors usually get, um, sometimes it's good sermon. Uh, For me, sometimes it's nice outfit. Um, (laughs) And then it's disgruntled, you know, whatever. So those moments when people take time um, out of their life to say, Hey, like you mattered to me is um, I don't think folks realize how meaningful that was. And so to be able, as someone who has worked with you day in and day out and been in some of that nitty gritty of folks complaining, to see people show up for you in that particular way um, just made me so happy and joy-filled. Yeah, and we had people that that came who left. Yeah, yeah. uh, In in one iteration of anger or another, Mm -hmm. that you know, conflict that happens in the life of the church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And they came back for for whatever reason um it was not made entirely clear to me but they were there yeah um, it was an important i witness. had mixed feelings about it i bet but they were there and um yeah it's it's the human it's the human dilemma right you 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 need to you need to go away for a time and the ability to, to suck it up and come back because there was something there that was important that's a great thing yeah and I think, too, sometimes we're so rigid about that. Yeah, it's either or. Yeah. yeah. And um, the place I feel us called to go is less either or, right? Yeah. And, and more naming of reality of like, hey, I need, you know, I need to figure out my stuff. But for a time, this place has been good and it might not be any longer sort of stuff. So I'm happy that we have um, together ushered some of that in I mean not having co-pastors 
right? That's not been, that's been an in-between, not an either-or. There are still people confused about that, and I'm sure they will be. <laughs> well, and I, and I wanted to make sure that I, that I, that I said in the message that, that they defended, you know, people defended this mm-hmm. internally, Mm-hmm. And they defended it to the the powers that were necessary to make it happen mm-hmm. in the in the uh, conference, um, and so the ability to articulate this was important. They get to to continue to say this is important. Yeah. And there's now a new configuration of what co-pastors look like, mm-hmm. and the gifts that they bring are amazing, and will will bring Chapel Hill and the community to whatever's next, and hopefully, you know, stronger. Yeah. Well, and that's, I think that's, what's hard about this. It's real. it's obviously it's hard. Um, it's hard for us interpersonally to say goodbye to each other. There's a lot of things that are really hard, um, which is good. Like that, that means this was something really worthwhile. Cause like you said earlier, if it was easy, if it was easy for me to be like, peace, you know, <laughs> we, we, it would not have been as good. And I think folks saw how good it has been. Um, and I'm confident it will be good with, uh, mine and April's leadership and our staff and all of that. And um, the place the church is at is good, right? We're really poised to continue doing what we do. And um, I'm confident it'll be hard, but we'll figure that out together. And I'm really, um, I'm really hope-filled, right, for the future of this church and what we're able to do and the energy and how many people are continually finding us. There were folks who Sunday was their first yeah, was day. Yeah, was their first day, Absolutely. <laughs> Which, and yeah. uh, can we just can we just take a moment for Stairway to Heaven? Yeah. That was so much fun. That was incredible. Um, I loved seeing the people who were just flabbergasted, and the people who were obsessed. Like it was just, it was great. Yeah, I, and I, yeah, if there were if there were people angry about it, I didn't get it, and that was good. But you know, my last Sunday, my call. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> and and it came off. I mean, I thought we. No, did. it was awesome. It was so much fun. Right. Um, yeah. And that's the kind of church you like to do, right? Like, you know, there's nothing that prevents there being a, quote, secular song right. or rock music as a part of what we do together in worship, particularly that song, because it really makes you think about transition, if you think about the lyrics. Yeah. 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 So, the yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, the thing that occurred to me in what you were saying uh, a bit ago is that Church will always be hard. Mm-hmm. It's all it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, when church is easy, it's not really being church. Yeah, but you can choose your heart. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. And I think I think people are poised here for hard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're. I'm. Uh, I'm proud to be in a space that had done a lot of work around being a reconciling church and inclusivity. You know, more than twenty years ago. So now we can say, hey, yep, and let's, you know, let's put a little more flesh around what that looks like. Yeah. Because we're not going to stop at one place and not continue branching out to what it means to be inclusive. It worked, it, you know, in a, in a snap of the fingers, it became very different than what it was when they did the work. I mean, they did that first work in 1998. Yeah. And um, at that time, it was gay, lesbian. That mm-hmm. that was it. That was the conversation. Yeah, implied Implied white, implied cis, Absolutely. like implied. Absolutely, that's exactly, yeah. exactly yes. right. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're seeing that, that to be the beloved community is much broader than that. Uh-huh. And and we're we're in a place where that's happening Yes. in very organic ways. Um, and that's great. And it just can't be taken for granted. Yeah. And we have to, um, we have to do work around what that looks like to yeah. make sure we, yeah, we do what's necessary. We were just talking about that this morning particularly around folks um, that are disabled and what does it mean to be a more inclusive body of Christ, right? That's going to be good, hard work um, of which there's incredible joy in. Yeah, and and your fingerprints. <laughs> less, and yours. Less and yours. like a crime. Upon yeah. my heart. <laughs> Upon my heart. Well, you got anything else for us, Pastor? Oh, peace out. Yeah. (laughs) Well done. Good and faithful servant. And you. So next week, um, you suckers just skip me. Just just opining about my own message. (laughs) Can I dial in? (laughs) 
free bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll probably need it. Um, and we might need to take a, a small hiatus. We'll figure things out. But this podcast, this iteration, will keep going because we know this is how um, this is how some of you do church, and that's important to us. And figuring out how to how to continue doing that and to keep getting better is important for who we are as Chapel Hill. So, thanks for uh, sticking with us in this first chapter. There is one thing I have to do. Oh, what's that? Because you have scolded me every time I've done it before. Oh, you do? Yes, please. I know what this because is Because it be. is so appropriate at the moment. Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can say it one more time, but I'm going to let people know. Barry would say goodbye for like the first several podcasts and I was like this is not a phone call like you do not need to <laughs> say goodbye <laughs> like people will know it's done um, so it only seems fair that that we end uh, our last iteration of this podcast together with another very goodbye okay talk to you later bye <laughs>